So coming up, ladies and gentlemen, is a presentation by Shri H.K. Raghu, Executive Director, Urban Transport and High Speed RDSO. Shri H.K. Raghu is serving as Executive Director, Coordination, Urban Transport and High Speed Directorate at RDSO Lucknow. He completed his graduation, BE Mechanical Engineering, with honors from University of Roorkee, now IIT Roorkee, in the year 1987. His post-graduation in industrial engineering from National Institute for Training in Industrial Engineering, NITIE, Mumbai in 1989. He has done his advanced management course from INSEAD Singapore and ICIFLS Malaysia. Previous to the current posting, he had worked in different capacities over Indian Railways. Senior Professor, Diesel Technologies at Indian Railway Institute for Mechanical and Electrical Engineering, Jamalpur. Additional Divisional Railway Manager at Dhanbad Division, Chief Workshop Engineer of Modern Coach Factory Rai Bareilly and Chief Project Manager of Modern Coach Factory Rai Bareilly Project. And over to you, sir, for your presentation. Good day to everyone who is listening to me. We are from RDSO Lucknow, uh, Indian Railway. I will be talk talking about Government of India policies regarding Make in India, Atmanavar Bharat, and the work done by Metro Rails, MOUHA, and Ministry of Railway at RDSO. Uh, at RDSO, Urban Transport and High Speed Directorate, RDSO Lucknow, is basically providing a single window service for all technical clearance and safety certification of all the metro rail system over India. Metro certification and technical clearance given so far by RDSO uh, starting from 2013 to Gurgaon Metro, then 2014 Bangalore Metro, then 2014 Mumbai Metro, then 2014 Jaipur Metro, then again 2014 Chennai Metro, and in 2015 Hyderabad Metro, then 2016 Kochi Metro, then 17 DMRC Metro, then in 17 Lucknow Metro, then in 19 Nagpur Metro with Hyundai Rotam uh, rolling stock, then Noida Metro with CRRC rolling stock in 2018, and then KMRCL in 2019. Nagpur Metro with CRRC rolling stock in 2019, and uh, Gujarat Metro with Hyundai Rotam rolling stock in 2020. After giving the certification for these 14 metros, the major points which are coming to our conclusion are the major observations are till now each metro system developed is different from the other. Rolling stock of one metro line cannot be utilized in any other metro. Technology of propulsion. DC traction and signaling and communication system are of PSE nature. Each metro project is therefore get loaded with undesired design and development cost for all these systems. Due to variation in design and size of component of one metro to other, the quantity requirement of one type of component is less than the break-even quantity for its indigenous production. As a result of this, local sources for subsystems and components are not developing. Now coming to regarding Atmirbar Bharat. Atmirbar Bharat is basically based on five main pillars. The pillar number one is economy. And when we talk about the economy, it is not simply saying some incremental changes, but the quantum jump. Basically, we are looking for a very high quantum jump and so that our uh, economy comes to the a stage when we can reach to the 5 trillion economy. Second is infrastructure. Our infrastructure, whatever we create during this period, this should be representing the modern India. That whatever system we develop are to be technological driven systems. Regarding the demography, India is full of vibrant demography and the largest democracy. So we can uh, use this demographic advantage to uh, Atmirbar Bharat. Finally, the demand, the full utilization of power and the demand and supply. The Atmirbar Bharat Istumali packages are, which, which are announced, Atmirbar Bharat Istumali packages which are announced are 
business including msmes then poor including farmers then agriculture then new horizons for growth and the government reform and enablers bharat sarkar ke aarthik package 20 lakh crore rupaye ka ganit kaha kitna kharch isme yadi hum dekhenge to pm garib yojana swasthya ke liye 1.92 lakh crore then msme sectors ke liye 5.94 crore then shramik evam krishi ke liye 3.10 lakh crore then micro agri infra mass evam madhmakhi palan ke liye 1.50 lakh crore then viability gap funding evam manrega ke liye 14 48100 crores then finally the rbi uh, ki taraf se jo ghoshana hui hai usme 8 lakh crore we will be discussing here only the item which is related to msmes and we need boost to our msmes by rupees 5.94 lakh crores so major focus will remain on msme during my presentation the step to boost business of msmes emergency credit line to business msmes from banks and nbfcs up to 20% of entire outstanding credit as on 29 to 2020 borrowers from up to 25 crore outstanding and rupees 100 crore turnover eligible loan to have four year tenure with moratorium of 12 months on principal repay repayment interest to be cap 100% credit guarantee covered to banks and nbfcs on principals and interest no guarantee fee no fresh collateral 45 lakh unit can resume business activity and safeguard jobs now coming to rupees 20000 crore subordinate debts for stressed msmes stressed msmes needs quality support and equity support government of india will facilitate provision of rupees 20000 crore as subordinate debts 2 lakh msmes are likely to be benefited functioning msmes which are npa or are stressed will be eligible government will provide a support of rupees 4000 crore to cgtmse cgtmse will provide partial credit guarantee support to banks promoters of the msme will be given debt by bank which will then be infused by promoters as equity in the unit if you just want to know what is subordinate debts subordinate debts is basically lesser in the hierarchy than the senior debt which is given here in the, this figure and the uh, 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 liability for payment comes after the senior debt so uh, government of india has announced the subordinate debts rupees 5000 crore equity infusion for msmes msme faces severe shortage of equity fund of fund with corpus of rupees uh, 10000 crore is set up provide equity fund for msme with growth potential and viability fund of fund operated through a mother fund and few daughter fund fund structure leverage rupees 50000 crore of funds at daughter fund level expand msme size as well as capacity encourage msmes to get listed on main board of stock stock exchange the government of india has also redefined the classification of, of msmes you can see from this chart earlier msme classification was for micro it, it should be less than 25 lakh manufacturing uh, enterprises investment and for a small industry it, it should be uh, lesser than 5 crore and for medium it was lesser than 10 crore okay. similarly for service enterprises investment micro means it if it is less than 10 lakh rupees a small means if it is less than 2 crore rupees and medium means if it is less than 5 crore rupees now these limits have been revised and raised classification of micro now for manufacturing service investment has increased from earlier 25 lakh to now rupees 1 crore and for a small from earlier 5 crore to it has been increased to 10 crore and for medium industries it has increased from 10 crore to 20 crore similarly for manufacturing service turnover uh, it has increased to 5 crore 
for micro and for a small uh, industry it is increased to 50 crore and for medium industry up to 100 crores one more important uh, decision which has been taken by government of india recently is that uh, for all the tenders up to 200 crores there will not be any global tender indian msmes and other company have often focused uh, often faced unfair competition from foreign companies therefore no global tender in government procurement up to 200 crore necessary amendments of general finance rules will be affected this is an important government step towards atmanirbhar bharat to support make in india environment this is expected to help msmes to boost their business multifold other measures which are taken by government of india on the request of government of india rbi raised the way and means advance limits of states by 60% and enhance the overdraft duration limit. Issued all the pending income tax refund up to rupees 5 lakh immediately benefiting around 14 lakh taxpayers. Implemented a special refund and drawback disposal drive for all pending refund and drawback claims. Both the other measures amount of rupees 18,000 crore of refund. Sanctioning Sanctioned of rupees 15,000 crore for emergency health response packages. Again, uh, you can see the uh, further other measures are provided relaxation in statutory and compliance matters, extending last date of income tax turn to June 30, 2020, extending filling GST return to the end of uh, June. 2020. This is applicable for this year also. So you can uh, take it up to uh, June 2021. 24 into 7 customer clearance till 30th June 2020. Relaxation of three months for debt card holders with uh, withdraw cash fee from any ATM, etc. Allowing payment before 15th May 2020 for motor vehicle and health insurance policies. Mandatory board meeting extended by 60 days till 30th September, allowing extraordinary journal meeting through video conference and e-voting sampling voting facilities. Measures taken by Reserve Bank of India. Reduction of cash reserve ratio has resulted in liquidity enhancement of rupees uh, 1,37,000 crores targeted long-term repo operations to rupees 1,50,000 crores uh, for fresh uh, deployment and investment grade uh, cooperative bond, commercial papers and non-convertible debentures. TLTRO of rupees 50,000 crores for investing them in investment grade bond, commercial papers and non-convertible debentures of NBFCs and MFIs. MFIs. Increase the bank limit for borrowing overnight under the marginal standing facilities, allowing the banking system to avail an additional rupees uh, one, one crore, uh, one lakh thirty seven thousand crores of liquidity at the reduced MS, MSF rate. Further measures which are taken by Reserve of Bank of India is announced a special refinance facility to Nabard, Sidbi, and the NHB for a total amount of rupees 50,000 crore at the policy repo rate. Announce the opening of a special liquidity facility of rupees 50,000 crore for mutual fund to alleviate uh, intensified liquidity pressures. Mortium of three months on payment of installment and payment of interest on working capital facility in respect of, uh, in respect of all term loan Easing of working capital financing by reducing margins for loans by NBFC to commercial real estate sector additional time of one year has been given for extension of the date of commencement of commercial operation. Now, coming to the relief of contractors, relief given to the contractors by government India, government of India is extension of up to six months without cost to contractor to be provided by all central agencies like railways, ministries of road transport, highways, central public works, department, etc. Covers construction works and goods and services contract. It also covers obligations like completion of work, intermediate milestone, etc. 
and extension of concession period in PPP contract. Government agencies to partially release bank guarantee to the extent contract are partially completed to ease cash flow. Extension of registration and completion date. For real estate project under RERA, adverse impact due to COVID and projects extend the risk of defaulting on RERA timelines. Timelines need to be extended. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs will advise state and union territories and their regulatory authorities to the following effect. Treat COVID-19 as an event of force misery under RERA. Extend the registration and completion date show motto by six months for all registered projects expiring on, uh, on or after 25th March without individual applications. Regulatory authority may extend this for another period up to three months if needed. Issue fresh project registration certification automatically with revised timelines. Extend timelines for various statutory compliances under RERA concurrently. These measures will de-stress real estate developers and ensures completion of project so that ho home buyers are able to get delivery of their booked houses with new timelines. Rupees 30,000 crores a special liquidity scheme for financial institutions like NBFCs, HFCs and MFIs. NBFCs, HFC and MFIs are finding it difficult to raise money in debt market. Government will launch rupees 30,000 crore special liquidity scheme. Under this scheme, investment will be made in both primary and secondary market transaction investment grade debt paper for NBFC, HFCs, and MFIs. It will supplement RBI government measures to augment liquidity. Security will be fully guaranteed by Government of India. This will provide liquidity support to NBFCs, HFC, MFIs and mutual fund and create confidence in the market. Rupees 90,000 crore liquidity injections for discounts. Revenue of power distribution companies have plumped. Unprecedented cash flow problem accentuated by demand reduction. Discounts players to power generation and transmission companies is currently rupees 94,000 crores. PFC oblique REC to infuse liquidity of rupees 90,000 crore to discount against receivables. Loan to be given against state guarantees for exclusive purpose for discharging liability of discounts and GENCOs. Linkages, linkage to specific activity reforms, digital payment facility by discounts for consumers, liquidation of outstanding dues of a state government plan to reduce financial and operational losses. Central public sector generation companies shall give rebate to discounts, which shall be passed on to the financial final consumers, that is industries. Rupees 40,000 crores partial credit guarantee scheme for NBFCs, NBFCs, HFCs, and MFIs with low credit rating require liquidity to do fresh lending to MSMEs and individuals. Existing PCGS scheme to be extended to cover borrowing such as primary insurance of bond, TPs, liabilities side of balance sheet of such entities. First 20% of loss will be borne by the government uh, guarantors, that is Government of India. Double A paper and below including unrated paper eligible for investment, especially relevant for many MFIs. This scheme will result in liquidity of rupees 45,000 crores. Tax related measures, rupees 50,000 crore liquidity through TDS and TCS rate reduction. In order to provide more fund at the disposal of taxpayers, the rates of tax reduction at source for non salary spe specified payment made to residents and rates of tax collection at source for the specified receipt shall be reduced by 25% to the existing rates. Payment for contract professional fees, interest, rent, dividend, commission, commission brokerage, etc. shall be eligible for this reduced rate of TDS. This reduction shall be applicable for the remaining part of financial year 2021 that is from 
uh, uh, 31st uh, March 2021. This measure will release liquidity of rupees 50,000 crores. Other direct tax measures, all pending refunds to charitable trust and non-cooperative business and professional, including propriety safe, partnership, LLP and cooperative sell issued immediately. Due date of all income tax return for financial year 1920 will be extended. Similarly, for 2021 is also extended October 20, uh, up to October 2020 to 30th November 2020 and tax audit from 30th September 2020 to 31st October 2020. Similarly, for this year also, it has been announced the same day. Date of assessment getting barred on 30th September 2020 extended to 31st December 2020 and those getting barred on 31st March 2021 will be extended to 30th September 2021. Period of Vivas Se Viswas scheme for making payment without additional amount will be extended to 31st December 2020. Now coming to Niti Aayog policies, which are basically for industry 4.0. Niti Aayog defines the industry 4.0 and uh, has also announced a specific uh, relaxation to such industries. Launch a major initiative to push industry to adopt industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is characterized by increasing digitization and interconnection of product values chain and business model. It will significantly impact sectors like automobile, pharmaceutical, chemicals, and financial services, and will result in operational efficiency, cost control, and revenue growth. Experts feel that emerging markets like India could benefit tremendously from the adoption of Industry 4.0 practices. Now, incentive to Industry 4.0, which are announced by Niti Aayog, the development of industries that produce the key building blocks forming the basis of Industry 4.0 could, could be incentivized. Incentive could be focused on MSMEs that manufacture products including sensors, actuator, drives, synchronous motor, communication system, computer display, and auxiliary electromechanical system. Similarly, industries adopting Industry 4.0 standard could be provided support for a fixed period of time. Now, coming to the work which has already been done by the metros, Delhi Metro Rail Corporation has already indenized about 18 sub subsystems and 17 unit exchange spares which are costing 18.7 lakh us dollar and 34 sub uh, system costing 3.83 lakh us dollar are identified for indigenization nagpur metro is looking forward for indigenizing of 28 different items costing rupees 13.74 crore per train set now coming to the opportunities for Indian industries in National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited. Make in India efforts are made in this uh, field also. NHRCL has identified items for Make in India for track item. To, out of total 20 items, 12 items are identified for indigenization. For civil engineering item, out of 52, 50 items have been identified for indigenization. Electrical and SNT out of 78 items, 48 items are identified. Similarly, for rolling stock out of 24 items, 6 items are identified for indigenization. The work which has already been done by MOUHA and Ministry of Railway, the standard of rolling stock and signaling system of Metro Rail in India have been notified in 2017 after the approval of board. The standards of rolling stock fix the standard of civil structure the standards of electrical system have been uh, concurred by railway board and going to be notified soon. Various metro rail have already started procurement as per the notified standard. CBTC system is also developed by BL, CDEC, DMRC, STQC through MOUHA. The issues which still need to be addressed are the unified tender of rolling stock and signaling for new metro rails for at least one state by metro organization. Recently, we, uh, the government of India has advised and the Ministry of Railway has also advised all the state metros that they should have the similar one, one tender for all their projects which are coming in near future. Uh, as a regard, Kanpur Metro and Agra Metro are having the common tender. Manufacturing of rolling stock and railway 
PSUs like Modern Coach Factory Raibareli, ICF uh, Chennai, and RCF Kapurthula with TOT and test and validation facilities. Manufacturing of propulsion system in India can be taken up by PUs and private players like BHCL, BL, LNT, Kirloskar, Electrical Crompton Reefs, etc. Manufacturing of signaling system in India can be taken up by BL, CDEC, BL, and TCS. We recommend the use of licensed communication frequency for train control for better security and reliability. The immediate future need is to propagate the concept of one nation, one metro. This is the time for consolidation of Indian industries for manufacturing of metro rolling stock in India. Titagard Pharma has won the international bid of manufacturing the supply of 102 ultra modern rolling stock for Pune Metro. Ministry of Railway and Ministry of Urban and Housing Affairs are there for facilitating the investment by Eastern Horizon. Niti Aayog has already published its policy to help Indian industries. Industry need to gear up itself for Industry 4.0 standards. Now, looking at the economy uh, part of uh, uh, government of India, India economy has uh, at present is very low, and especially in 2020 because of COVID, uh, the economy has been uh, very poor. For uh, economic growth is very poor for India, and various agency has expressed uh, calculated the projected the. Uh, 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 growth in uh, economy is uh, to the tune of uh, say minus 9.9 percent in 2022 by o OECD and World Bank has uh, given a projection of minus 9.6 percent then Asian Development Bank has given the rating of minus 8 percent IMF has given the rating of 8 percent CSO has given the rating of minus 7.7 percent and as per RBI the economy will be minus 7.5 percent for the year 2020. Now we need to have a uh, quantum jump and take this uh, negative uh, growth to the positive growth and uh, uh, which has been expected by 11.5 percent in the year 2021. The IMF raised its economic outlook after vaccination hopes AMD stimulus. Chalo aao chale aat nirbar bharat ki or make in india example is the icf bande bharat express which everybody has seen and experienced dhanyawad and